A few months ago, I set myself a pretty ambitious challenge to try and qualify for the Gravel World Championships. Now, I'm a good three years into retirement from professional cycling, so making that step back in is going to be one hell of a challenge. Now, some of you might have already seen the video on GCN about how my race actually went, but in this very video, I'm going to show you everything I did to prepare and all my training I did for the race. So for those of you who are wondering, well, surely you can't qualify for the Gravel World Championships because you're not on a professional team. Well, no, you're wrong because the really cool concept of this whole thing is that there are World Gravel Series events. There are loads all around the world that you can choose from. Anybody can go and race them. And if you get in the top 25% of your age category, you could then qualify a spot for the actual World Championships. This was obviously a really appealing challenge and I decided to bite the bullet and go for it. But my journey kind of getting back more into riding started back in January where I guess at the end of the last year I really wasn't riding my bike very much I was only riding for work so in January I decided to ride my bike every single day for 30 minutes throughout January and I did that and that was kind of the first stepping stone and I didn't set myself any sort of structured training or power it was simply to get on and ride my bike then kind of January, February came and I was up in the intensity doing a bit longer rides and I was feeling quite good. So that's when I decided to enter Battle on the Beach. I did that race. I absolutely loved being back racing and I actually felt quite good on the bike. The legs were feeling good. So that's when I decided to bite the bullet, enter the race. That's when I decided I needed some proper training. Me just kind of winging it was only going to get me so far, but I needed some proper professional help. And that's when I enlisted the help of the Wahoo System Training App. It's what I used to train for the Steamboat Gravel Race. But this time, I'm trying to qualify for the Gravel World Championships. But I've also enlisted some help from Ian Boswell, a very well-known gravel racer who is going to talk me through my training and give me some extra tips. Ian, thank you so much for taking the time to chat to me today. Obviously, I'm training for a pretty big gravel race. And I guess I've trained for road races, track races before, and I guess I did quite a bit of training for the Steamboat Gravel Race. But I think the difference with that was I was training to get round, but now I'm training to try and race. But what is the main differences between training for, say, a road race and training for a gravel race? I mean, they're becoming more similar as like the level of gravel becomes you know more competitive. I think the one thing you find in a lot of gravel races is that the the pace is oftentimes steadier. So I think for myself, it's oftentimes like taking these short, intense efforts and like kind of breaking them out into a longer, steady effort. Just because you know these races are so fatiguing over the course of you know whether it's three, four, six, eight hours, you know to be able to like kind of manage your effort and it's more about learning your body and the levels that kind of you can ride at. So what are the main sessions to focus on. In my training plan, I've got sessions from, you know, solely focusing on cadence work to really long ones. But what are the ones that are really going to make a difference? I mean, I think having like a, a wide range of workouts is really important, you know, because you are going to experience a bit of everything across a gravel event, you know, it might be a really hard start, then you settle into something more steady, and then the race might get a little spicy towards the end. You know, my favorite specific gravel workout is just to go out and try to average 20 miles an hour for as long as I can. So I'll, I'll map out like, you know, a hundred mile route. And oftentimes, you know, early in the season, I get to like 50, 60 miles and I blow up and can't, can't keep the speed up. Um, but oftentimes in, in these gravel races, you know, when you look at the elite men's category, we're averaging around 20 miles an hour. So I just try to like work up in my own training by myself to average that speed for as long as I can. And then there's not really one magic effort. It really is a range and it depends on, you know, kind of your, you know, physiology, because some people might need more high intensity stuff. Some people need to work more on endurance. Um, so mixing it up with a wide range of, of workouts is really important. I feel like I get that guilt inside me of missing a session and it's like, oh, it's all going to go rubbish now because I've missed that one session. But in reality, how much of a difference does it make if you miss a few sessions here and there? I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't make a huge difference. And it's one thing that I've noticed since leaving the world tour where, you know, every day you're stressed about like hitting that workout. And now, you know, just similar to you, you know, I've got a job, I've got a family, I'm traveling with work. I miss sessions all the time. What I used to do is try to make up for sessions like, oh, I missed this ride. So now I'm going to turn tomorrow's three hour ride into a five hour ride. So if I, if I miss a session, what I try to do is just kind of jump back into the routine of it. Because also if you're living a normal life, you know, as most people are who are attending these events, you have a lot of other factors besides just training. And if you're a professional athlete and all you need to do is go ride your bike and recover, like you can, you know, you can kind of overload and then, you know, back off. But oftentimes if you miss a session, it's because there's other stress 
that's happening in your life. So oftentimes like, you know, just scratch that day and then the next day just get back to, to where you started. I'm also going to be going away with work and sometimes I can't take my bike with me. Is it worth trying to replace my sessions with something else like a light gym session or a gentle run or anything like that? Or is it worth just resting? Yeah, so I think having no zero days is, is something I've tried to implement in my life just because I know I can't train at full capacity every day. Doing something every day, whether it's a walk, whether it's you know a yoga session on system, a, a short you know strength workout, something I can do anywhere in the world. And I think for me, and I think for a lot of people, just doing something every day gives you that sense of accomplishment and, and progression, I guess, as well. And oftentimes it's, it's just mentally, you get that kind of refresh by having the opportunity to just do something every day. The great thing about the Wahoo System app is that you can, you know, do some sessions indoors and outdoors as well. But what ones are, you know, the key sessions that I should be doing indoors versus outdoors? You know, the sessions that I like to do most indoors are like the torque sessions, you know, just because the, you know, whether you're on the kicker or the kicker bike, you know, the, the resistance is so, you know, you can really crank up the torque. And, you know, oftentimes when you're outside and you're, you know, trying to do a torque session, any little variation of, you know, gradient in the road can really like, you know, throw off your cadence. So, you know, you have to get out of the saddle and really changes the dynamic of the workout. So those, you know, kind of low cadence, high torque workouts are super efficient to do indoors. Um, that's, I mean, for myself, something like the GOAT workout, that's like my number one go-to indoor workout. And it's, you know, it's 47 minutes and I'm, you know, within an hour, I get amazing workout. I can do it before, you know, before I start work in the morning or after work in the evening, and it's a very short amount of time and a very effective workout. The app is super simple to use. That's all you have to do is kind of put your details in, say what you're training for, what your aims are, and it generates a plan for you. My training plan has a mix of everything. I've got some longer rides in there. I've got some short intervals in there too. So everything that's hopefully going to help me be in the best possible shape for the race. But now I've got my training plan. So all that's left is to get on with the hard work. It is definitely on days like today that remind me why I first started riding a bike. It's a glorious day and I mean look at the views and castle in the background. There is literally nowhere better to ride bike in my opinion. I'm joining my little brother. There he is for a zone two ride. I mean, I used to be a lot fitter than my little brother back in the day. Definitely used to take advantage and drop him at every opportunity I could. And now, I'm the one being dropped. Now, I was actually down to do a cadence build workout today, but I'm actually quite happy with where my cadence is at the moment. So I've chosen the attacker session to do, which consists of five intervals, six minutes long, start just below FTP, finish just above. Yeah, I've chosen a harder session. Am I gonna hit myself for this? Probably yes, but it's gonna make me a better bike rider, hopefully. Yeah, this is actually only one effort down, still got four more to go. I'm gonna be a state by the end. I'm heading out with Connor and we're filming a video for the channel. So I thought this was gonna be the perfect opportunity to get some more training in. So it's 115 kilometers, but I've also ridden into the office and I'm gonna ride home. So it's gonna be around 130, 135 maybe kilometers, which is a really good day of training in the back. We also did um, a power test at the start and at the end of the ride. And the first effort I did was 276 watts. And then after a good four hours of riding, we repeated that effort on the same climb and I did 271. So five watts difference, which I was expecting to feel and go a lot worse than I did. I went and did a 5K park run, which for those of you who don't know, is just basically a 5K run with loads of other people around a park on a Saturday morning at 9 a.m. I thought it's not gonna do any harm and I think it's actually quite good. It's a glorious day outside, but unfortunately today I've got quite a busy day and haven't got time to ride for hours and hours outside, even though I'd love to, but on the indoor trainer, which I really don't mind, just get on, get it done. But today I've got our session and it is 40 seconds on, 20 seconds off, six times. Then I have a block of effort just under threshold and I have to do that three times. Now I've said that out loud, that sounds really, really hard. 
that is my efforts all done and dusted and I feel quite good actually which I'm a little bit scared to say but I've got a few more longer rides coming up the next few days with Connor again so I'm not sure how my legs are going to be feeling after that but all good for now. So today I'm back out on the bike and it's a nice easy day for me today. I'm actually out filming at the moment. It is relatively easy riding so we just kind of ride along, deliver our lines, pedaling nice and slowly so we can actually talk and breathe properly. I was on the turbo the other day and it was nice and sunny and now I get to ride outside and it's freezing but it's all okay. It's not raining which is the main thing. We are now nearly coming up to a week from rest day. Rest day? Race day even. This weekend I'm actually away. Pretty special occasion. I've spent enough time when I was an actual professional cyclist sacrificing special occasions, parties, birthdays, to go and train or race my bike. Yeah, gonna get my last training session in now. Then gonna get ready for the weekend. And then I'm into my taper week. And a bit of traveling to Denmark, which is gonna be very exciting. And to pick up my new bike, which I cannot wait about. As I mentioned at the start, I did the Steamboat Gravel Race where I was purely just trying to get round. This time, I am trying to be in the mix and race. What is going to be like the biggest difference I'm going to find? Probably mentally will be the biggest difference. You know, you've experienced gravel, you kind of know what it's like, you've got to see the, the fun side of it, but now you're trying to see how well you can do. So I think, you know, it's it's going to be a little bit more probably mental, like the, the stress of like, oh, you know, I got to get through the aid station fast and I got to make sure everything's dialed which is oftentimes when people make mistakes, when they're kind of mentally pushing themselves, you know, throughout the course of a race. You know, you might get to an aid station and like accidentally leave without filling up your water bottle or something like that because you're, you know, you're trying to do this best you can, but that's the most important time to like, you know, relax. If you do stop at an aid station, if you do have a mechanical to actually just like take a deep breath, gather yourself and uh, try to work through things strategically and methodically rather than just in haste where you're you know, throwing your CO2s and your plugs and trying to get it fixed as quick as possible. Just if something goes wrong or you come to an aid station, you know, take a deep breath, check in with yourself, and oftentimes you'll be back on your bike quicker if you kind of approach it with a little bit more of a, a clear mind than you know, this racing mind of you know, being in a chaotic state. And then kind of focusing a little bit more on the race, the start is always very chaotic. We're kind of, you know, men and women, all age groups are kind of mixed together. And I find myself getting really carried away at the start. I try and like stick in a group that I probably won't be able to last with till the finish. The start, should I kind of just kind of ride my own race there or should I kind of go for it, kind of fight for to stay with a good group or should I just kind of relax? It's a long day, ride at my own pace. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the hardest question with gravel because if you can get in a good group early and they eventually slow down, then you're with, you know, a faster group who's ideally, you know, moving quicker, working better. Um, but I oftentimes see people kind of get way in over their head in the first, you know, five, 10 miles of a, of a long day. And then, you know, last thing you want to do is blow up in the last, you know, third of the race. So I think it's, it's finding a good group that you're with. And if anything, you know, it'd probably be better to feel good in the last half and you'll and you know because you're with this big group in the start you're oftentimes egged on to go quicker than and faster than you want to go or need to go um so if you can settle into your own pace and your own group early on oftentimes you'll find yourself catching people later on and with gravel you know the equipment is so important you know oftentimes mistakes happen and you you know you puncture or you know crash when you're kind of riding above your ability and so you have to think, you know, to go fastest over the whole course of the race is oftentimes riding a little bit more within yourself, just so you can take the more technical sections with a little bit more focus and kind of consideration rather than just hanging on cross-eyed, looking at the wheel in front of you. And that's the beautiful thing about these gravel events is regardless how strong you are, there's always going to be someone ahead of you and there's always going to be people behind you. So finding that group that, you know, is both working fast, but also kind of within your, you know, your level of fitness and ability. I am really, really bad at eating in the first half of a race where I'm, I guess, more in the red, trying to fight for the wheels. Any tips on kind of reminding yourself to eat and, yeah, getting stuff down? I mean, honestly, the easiest way is on your Wahoo Bike computer to set a, a personal notification where every, you know, 20, whatever you decide, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, something pops up and says, eat and drink. Because especially early on in a race, you know, oftentimes we start early in the morning, it's not very hot. 
you're in a big group and you can go an hour and a half without eating anything. And in the moment, you're probably not hungry because you've just had a big breakfast and you're nervous. And you know, like I said, the temperatures haven't risen yet. So you're, you're not thinking about eating and drinking. Next thing you know, you're you know, 90 minutes in and you realize, oh, I haven't eaten anything since breakfast four hours ago. Um, so setting some type of notification just to remind you to eat and drink. Or another thing, if you don't, you know, if you if you don't want to be looking down at your bike computer, you know, observe the people around you. Like use that as a reminder. If you see someone else ahead of you, you know, grab their bottle, reach into their pocket, use that as like a cue, like, oh, if they're eating, it's also probably a safe time for for you to be eating. So, you know, reach into your pocket, grab something, grab your bottle, have a drink. Um, yeah, using cues of of those around you is also a super important section and you know in gravel races oftentimes there's moments when you just can't physically eat and drink it's either too fast or maybe the road's too rough and you don't feel comfortable so just kind of remind yourself every time you get to a smooth section of, of road or trail uh you know make sure to take a take a drink and take a bite mm, definitely well thank you very much for your time today that has been super helpful and hopefully i'll take that all on board for my race and it'll be absolutely fine good luck so I was entering my taper week, I was feeling good, the legs were feeling good, the morale was high and I was absolutely buzzing to get out to Denmark, get my bike and get racing. But it was actually on the day I travelled out to Denmark, I had a little bit of a sore throat, I was like, oh maybe, you know, I'll pop a few vitamin C tabs, I'll have a good sleep and I'll wake up and I'll feel fine. But it kind of got worse and worse and as race day approached I had a full blown cold and I was absolutely gutted because well, you want to be on top form, you want to be 110% on race day and all that, you know, months of training and hard work and you get to race day and it's like, well, I'm just not feeling good. Um, and I think even before the race, I knew, I knew it wasn't going to go how I wanted it to go, but I still wanted to get out there, give it a good crack and see what I can do. You know, you never know, I might start the race, I might feel absolutely fine, but that didn't really happen. I started, didn't feel good, um, a spoiler alert didn't actually finish the race but if you want to know all about the race head over to the other video um, where I explain everything but yeah I was really really disappointed because I, I genuinely thought I actually felt quite good on the bike um, and I'm really gutted it didn't go to plan and on reflection um, at the time I, I was really down about it I kind of yeah it took me a long while to I guess until the video went out and I saw all the comments under the video saying, you know, everybody appreciates me, you know, showing the not so good side to how races can go. Because sometimes it is, you know, oh yeah, I finished this amazing challenge and I was so strong and it's all good. Whereas in reality, it doesn't always go like that. Yes, you can put months and months into training then you can get to racing. It can all go to pop. And it probably happens a lot more than people think, especially in pro races as well. And, you know, Sometimes we don't see that side, so I think it is really important. But question is now, still done all this training, I'm over my illness. What do I do next? What is gonna be my next challenge? Let me know down in the comment section below what you think my next challenge should be. Um, as long as it is not raining, it is not three degrees, and I don't end up with half the beach on my face, I might consider it. Big thank you to the Wahoo System training app for keeping me on track, getting me through my training and keeping me motivated. And I guess thank you to all of you for leaving such lovely comments under my race video. I'll be honest, it really did pick me up. I was pretty anxious about that video going out. Obviously DNF, didn't go to plan. But yeah, it really brought me back to life and put a smile on my face reading all of your comments. So thank you very much for that. But let me know under this video what you thought of my training, my lead up and Hopefully, I'll see you in the next video. Oh, and give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed.